Hi everyone and welcome to our talk about IVF and ICSI. My name is Christodoulos and I am an embryologist working for Cryos International Sperm and Egg Bank, helping people fulfill their dreams for a family. My talk will be about in vitro fertilization and intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Um, I will try to connect the dots through the, this timeline and help you understand what happens with IVF and ICSI. Uh, all site collection, insemination, fur checks, and embryo development and transfer or cryopreservation are all lab procedures that have been around as assisted reproductive technologies for many years and are used worldwide at fertility clinics. When several hours have passed from ovulation trigger, which is a hormonal boost for the follicles to help the oocytes finally mature enough, we perform the oocyte retrieval. A few hours after the oocyte retrieval, we proceed with an insemination. In conventional IVF, 15,000 or more swimming sperm are added to a lab dish together with the oocytes. Sperm need to push through the cumulus oocyte complexes, a group of cells surrounding the oocytes playing a vital role in maturation and eventually penetrate the oocyte. Immediately, we move these dishes in a warm and safe and optimized environment where fertilization may happen. And we come back 16 to 18 hours later to check uh, for the desired results or we all wish for under the microscope. Once we do uh, the fur check and we verify that the oocytes are fertilized, we must uh, let them grow to embryos a few more days. This way, natural uh, selection occurs, meaning that the embryos of reduced quality will not develop properly while in a satisfactory development, we may end up uh, to embryo transfer or embryo cryopreservation. Now let's talk about what we expect to see when doing IVF. Um, it is understood that one in two cycles may not result in pregnancy. Uh, while on the other hand, if pregnancy is achieved, it may not produce a live birth. Many people undergo IVF uh, with their own sperm and oocytes, but approximately 10% of the cycles are performed with donor sperm and oocytes or by combining own donor, own and donor gametes. Um, these options are available when people are unlikely to conceive with their own sperm or oocytes and the chances are of getting pregnant uh, with donation are like those uh, who use entirely their own. Everyone has questions about new and exciting topics. So I tried to gather some typical concerns mentioned by patients uh, when they embark on their fertility journey. Um, what are the success rates for IVF versus ICSI? Overall, the outcome and the success rates are similar when we compare these technologies. But there are other factors like the quality uh, and the number of embryos transferred or the lining of the womb, which reflects the condition of the endometrium that may have some impact. What are the costs? Well, keep in mind that IVF costs are different between clinics and that you may need to spend some extra 20, 25% for ICSI as it's a difficult procedure that requires unique skills. Is it possible to see my embryos growing in the lab, in the dish? Um, yeah, some clinics may offer you the rare opportunity to view online through a dedicated web portal how your embryos are growing through time-lapse microscopy imaging. That's a novel way of undisturbed culture that is connected to computer systems. Um, what does freeze-all cycle mean? Uh, if your fertility clinic ever suggests uh, following a freeze-all cycle, it means that all normal embryos created through IVF or ICSI can be cryopreserved 
and transferred at the later stage, at your convenience or uh, when you are ready to extend your family after giving birth. What if uh, I want to use a donor? Finally, if you decide to use donor sperm uh, or oocytes through a reproductive tissue bank like cryos, you will have access to the medical history or other information of the donors in advance. And remember, donors will never have any parental or legal rights uh, to the children being born through this process. Um, eventually, cryos is next to you to help you choose the right one before going ahead with your treatment. So um, to summarize my talk, let me give you a few take home messages about the procedure of IVF and ICSI. Thousands of progressively moving sperm are essential to perform IVF. When severe sperm abnormalities are present or after a couple have had several IVF failures, I uh, recommend doing ICSI. Success rates are almost similar in these two assisted reproductive technologies. Many couples with otherwise untreatable infertility have given birth to healthy children. So remember, if you cannot use your own gametes, treatment with donor sperm or oocytes is always a reliable and a successful choice. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed my talk about IVF and Nixie. Take care. Bye-bye.